What's up, traders? Zach here from the Trading Network. Hope you guys are doing well and that everybody had a good weekend. Uh, it is Monday, February 8th, and I've got another daily market profile recap for you. So starting off, let's move into the key levels for this morning. Uh, first and foremost, I was interested in the 3900 level, uh, which was the overnight high from the most recent overnight session. You can see that right here on the profile. Second key level was the overnight point of control at 3896. You can see that we have that leveled right here, overnight POC, and that was also the overnight uh, VPOC or overnight volume point of control as well. So if I zoom in here, you can see that this bright cyan bar, that is volume point of control, and of course the uh, pink highlighted area on the profile, that is the point of control itself on the TPO. Uh, third key level, 3888.25, 25, right below that, I uh, was looking at the prior range high. That was the range high from Friday's regular trading hour session right here. And the fourth key level was the prior value area high at 38.83. So it was actually 38.82.75. I rounded up. Um, you can see right here. And this level also coincided with that previous uh, overnight volume point of control from the February 4th into February 5th overnight session right here. So the last uh, key level I was interested in this morning was the prior value low at 38.68.50. You can see that that also lined up with the range high, regular trading hours high, whatever you want to call it, uh, from the February 4th regular trading hours session as well. So a lot of confluence with that level. Obviously, we did not get uh, down there at all or near there at all. Uh, but what we did do, we will discuss uh, a little bit later. But first and foremost, let's discuss uh, my thinking as I was looking at price action and the profile this morning. So overnight inventory was 100% long. You can see that we have settlement label down here at 38.8025. And you can see that we have the overnight profile entirely above settlement. And that tells us that overnight inventory is 100% net long. Now, we were looking to open above Friday's range in value, which means we were looking to open with a gap, a gap between where the high was right here from Friday and where we are opening today. So you can see we have O period right here and we'll go ahead and draw a box around O period. So that's where we opened up and you can see that this is the high from Friday. So when we have a gap, uh, as you guys may know uh, who have been watching my videos, the gap and go rules are in play. All right, so essentially what this means is, just to recap that, is if the majority of overnight inventory is above settlement price from the previous regular trading hour session, higher probability that New York is going to fade that and show selling pressure. If the overnight inventory is short, which means that the majority of the overnight price action is below settlement, that means that there is a higher likelihood that New York is going to buy it up and show buying pressure. Now, with that said, the gap and go rules are in play when we have a gap between the high, for instance, of the previous regular trading hour session and where we are opening for the new regular trading hour session. So what that means is if we gap, if we open up with the gap rather, and we do not move down to close that gap quickly, then there's actually a shift in probability that says there's a higher likelihood that we continue the trend from the overnight and in this instance, you know, continue to the upside. So with that said, what actually happened today was we got the gap fill, but for the initial balance, the opening one hour, we had a really small range. So you can see we had a range from 3894 to 3902. So if we take a measurement, you can see we had a very tight range of seven and three quarter points. And, you know, when we have, obviously we're operating, you know, between previous profile levels, so we do have opportunity, but when we're bracketing in such a small range, we have less opportunity. We have less risk, but we have less opportunity, as Jim Dalton would say in Mind Over Markets. So with that, you have to be more precise with your entries. And, you know, that's especially when the tools come into play, like things that we use in the trading network proprietary indicator package in combination with the market profile levels so you can really make sure that you're taking precise entries and you know not getting chopped up in the middle of the range most retail traders will make their money in trending price action and then give their money back in a range so keep that in mind you know if you guys want to 
get good as traders, practice range trading, and keep in mind that price is going to range 70 to 80% of the time. And price is only going to trend a much smaller percentage of the time. So with that, you know, keeping that in mind, you can say, all right, if you get really good at range trading, then you can very likely be a successful and profitable trader purely based on knowing when the difference between trending and ranging price action is, and then being able to say, okay, it's time to use a trending strategy, or it's time to use a ranging strategy, and knowing the difference between the two and when it's time to use the proper play in the playbook, as I like to say. So uh, just to quickly recap there, uh, when we open outside of range and value, this, that means that there's a higher probability of directional conviction, also known as trending price action. Uh, we didn't really get much trending price action today. We had what was referred to as a neutral extreme day uh, in market profile terms, which means that we had a wide extended range and we closed on one of the extremes. So you can see here, if I zoom into the profile and we find C period, which is way up here, this is where our close was, right? So we, when we close on the extreme, when we have a wide range uh, and we close on the extreme and not, there's not much directional conviction, that can be referred to as a neutral extreme profile type. So my thought was if price could move and hold above that 38.96 overnight point of control level, that I was going to be looking to take long opportunity on the open uh, with continuation of the overnight price action towards the overnight high and ultimately to new highs. So we did indeed make new highs. You know, if I zoom out here, you can see that we did continue that trend and we did hit that 3909.75 level uh, later in the day. Obviously, we had that really tight initial balance, that opening hour range. Uh, but later in the day and towards the close, we did end up making new highs. So with that said, the higher probability play was for New York to fade the overnight and show selling pressure. And we did, before we made new highs, we did indeed close that gap. So while we did not get that gap fill in the initial balance, the opening hour range, uh, we did get it before we made new highs today. So you can see uh, this green highlighted area is the initial balance. So that again is where we hung out for the first hour, less than a 10 point range. We ended up breaking that to the downside uh, in F period. And then we saw the gap filled uh, within a point and a quarter, five ticks right here, uh, 38.88.25 was the high and 38.87 was today's low. So as soon as we came down, filled that gap, you know, this was clearly enough liquidity down here between the prior initial balance high, the prior overnight high from February 4th into February 5th. And of course, that uh, prior range high at 38.88.25. That was obviously enough liquidity for sellers to push price down other time frame players, if you will, to push price down, absorb that liquidity. That was clearly uh, a cheap trade, if you will. A cheap trade in market profile terms is essentially a good buy. You know, we want to buy when price or when the instrument is cheap, and we want to sell when the instrument is expensive. That's the idea of you know using value and using auction theory to our advantage. So, with that said. Uh, we did get more ranging price action than anything else. We did not have much directional conviction. And again, we had that neutral extreme profile type. So again, just to recap that previous analysis, upon open, I was looking to see if we could get acceptance and hold above that 3896.25 level. And if we could hold above that level, I was looking for a move up to new highs the overnight high before that and ultimately new highs, which we did indeed get, uh, but we didn't really push too much higher above that overnight high level at 3,900. If we could not hold above that level, uh, then I was looking for a move back down to that 3,888.25 level, which we did indeed get, but we did not get much lower. Again, we only got below that level by five ticks, but it was a very good target. If, you know, for instance, just to give you guys an example here, let me pull up, not to go on too much of a tangent, but let me pull up my regular chart. Let's go back to New York Open. And you can see here. So just as an example, you can use these levels to your advantage and say, okay, obviously price is operating and bracketing between, you know, we have Fibonacci pivot R2, I believe that is. Yep, that's R2. We've got overnight point of control, overnight high here, and then obviously we have our New York opening range. So for instance, that overnight point of control was the line in the sand. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. 
All right, so overnight point of control here was the line in the sand. So you can say if we break the line in the sand to the downside, then it is very likely that we're going to reach this previous range high at 3888.25. So this is an example right here of how you can use the candlestick chart, again, in combination with the profile to give you high probability trade opportunity, good targets, and again, a line in the sand level, a major level that holds significant weight because you know larger players, institutional players, whatever you want to think of it as, are doing business there. So we're viewing this 86, or I'm sorry, this 3896.25 level as the line in the sand. So you can have an if-then scenario to the tune of if we break this 3896.25 level right here, then I will look for short opportunity down to the prior range high at 3888.25 right down here right? So that gives you a good target and it gives you a line in the sand to say, if we violate this level, then there is very likely going to be a shift in behavior, or that is an indication that behavior is shifting. If we break the level, cannot move quickly above, then we are no longer getting acceptance above that level and it is now being rejected. So bringing on the rest of my tools here, you can see if I bring the indicators on, that there is going to be more confluence, right? So if we use something like the opportunity zone, you can see that price is rejecting the opportunity zone. It is rejecting Fibonacci pivot R2. It is also rejecting overnight point of control. VWAP is right above there. So that gives you a lot of protection for a stop loss. If you get short on the break of this level, you put your stop loss above that level and say, okay, if price gets back above the overnight POC, then it's very likely my trade idea is invalid and maybe that level is still support and we just came down a little bit lower than it. So I won't go too far on a tangent uh, in regards to you know how I use this stuff. If you guys are interested, uh, I'll talk a little bit more towards the end of the video. Uh, about how you can watch me trade and you know take trade opportunity like this in real time as well uh, but for now let's get back to the trade plan all right now moving into the summary just to wrap up here and go over the targets you can see that again line in the sand level was that 3896.25 level and as you saw today we didn't get a ton of directional conviction so we had a bit of the lower probability play occur today now, with that said, there was actually sufficient trade opportunity on both sides of that overnight POC. We just talked about a few downside opportunities from that overnight POC getting violated. And on the same token, or on the other side of the token, if you will, you can see that there was trade opportunity on the long side as well, where price was bouncing at Fib Pivot R2, where price was bouncing and using Fib Pivot R2, opening range low, VWAP, and of course that overnight point of control as support, giving us great protection for our stop loss below that. So I'll just let you guys glance at that briefly one more time. This is an area that I'm talking about right here, right? So there's long opportunity using that as support and there's short opportunity using that area as resistance. Okay, so moving into the targets. First upside target was the 3950 level. Now, before we move any further into the targets, I just wanna say that when creating these trade plans, especially at all time highs, it is difficult to pull out targets. You're either using indicators like we have in the proprietary indicator package, like the VWAP deviations, like Fibonacci pivots, things like that, or you're taking measured moves from price action patterns or structure in the market profile. Now, with that said, I only had three upside targets. So we obviously hit all those and we got a little bit higher than that 3906 level. But, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles. When I sit down, I say, all right, well, we're at all time highs again. So I'm just going to be cautious. You know, I'm not going to shoot for the moon when we've never been in this territory before. I want to be cautious. I want to make sure that I'm managing my risk first and foremost. And that is going to be at the forefront of my trading plan when we are at all time highs. So some people ask, hey, why do you only have three upside targets and you have almost double or sometimes double the downside targets? And my answer is, well, sometimes when we're at all time highs, we gotta take it level by level and watch price action. And then if patterns present themselves, maybe we can look at a little bit of higher time frames and take price action, uh, measured moves, things like that. 
or maybe we have something like an open in range and value where we can measure the previous session's profile and superimpose that and get a measurement for the next session. So with that said, we had all of the upside targets hit today, but it actually took a lot of patience. You know, our first upside target it was indeed hit uh, upon open in the initial balance. So we got, uh, you know, four or five point move from the open around 3896.25. We got that move up to 3900, the uh, previous overnight high right there. And then we got that second upside target hit, uh, 3904. That didn't get hit until after the initial balance. You know, it wasn't until uh, E period, I believe. Actually, we didn't even get up to 04 until P period. So that was way, way later in the day. So it took a lot of patience. And obviously, we actually got more downside opportunity uh, before those further upside targets were hit. So we hit the first upside target. The overnight high 3900 uh, we got pretty close to the second upside target in the initial balance didn't quite get there we proceeded to move down and take out uh, a one actually of the downside targets so we got very close to the second downside target we got to 3887 our second downside target was 3886.25 so you know looking at that level saying and watching price action you can say all right if we put in a local low if you guys aren't familiar with what a local low is i will link the video uh, if we put in a local low then maybe i'm going to close the position here so you can use these levels as targets they're not always going to hit to the tick sometimes they'll get within one tick sometimes they'll get within a few but they're good areas to keep an eye out for so with that said we technically only had one downside target hit we got within three ticks of that second downside target and then we proceeded to move right back up and make new highs and take out the rest of our upside targets. So later in the afternoon, P period, we got that 3904 level hit. Uh, the 3904 level was actually a predicted, if you will, level from the indicators that I have here. So going over here, you can see that each day the chart plots new Fibonacci pivots and it plots new VWAP deviations. So right now, you can see that our third upper VWAP deviation is at 39.1350. We actually have not been to 39.1350 yet, but these are calculated based on standard deviations, right? So this is how I will calculate or how I will find targets in areas that we have never been before. So I used Fibonacci Pivot R3 as one of my upside targets, and I used the third upper deviation of the VWAP. VWAP is the volume weighted average price for those of you who are not familiar. So essentially this indicator plots VWAP, which is right here. This is this dash dotted line. Uh, when price is above VWAP, the VWAP is green. And when price is below VWAP, the VWAP is red. And it also plots standard deviations of VWAP, which are referred to as, or I like to call them echoes of VWAP, if you will. So they give us very nice support and resistance levels. And again, they're calculated on standard deviations. So if you're familiar with how those work, you know that these are very high probability indicators that give us a statistical probability knowing how extended price is and how likely price is to revert to the mean. So with that said, uh, we got three out of three upside targets hit. I know it's kind of silly, not too much, uh, but again, you know, 10 points on the ES, that is plenty to make a living. And we got one out of five downside targets hit. So a lot of trade opportunity. Uh, again, the lower probability play occurred today, uh, but sometimes that's how it happens. And we got to take things level by level and take the opportunity where the market presents it. So first and foremost, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch these videos. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you do enjoy this content, please feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, also check out the links in the description below where you can find first our Facebook group where you can get access to our free trade plans like this that I release daily for ES and NQ futures markets. You can also find the tradingnetwork.io down in the description below, which is our website where you can get more information on one-on-one -on -one mentorship with me. I offer four-week programs, 10-week programs, and a few other varying lengths. You can also get information on joining our private Discord, where you can watch me and the Trading Network team trade live, scalp live daily, mainly NQ and ES futures. Uh, I also trade options and equities as well, and I am 
on chat answering questions. It is a two-way stream, so members of our private Discord can hop on the mic and ask me questions live while I'm trading. We all share charts, we all talk about trade ideas, and we all help each other grow as traders. In addition to the one-on-one -on -one private mentorship and the private Discord group, you can also get access to the Trading Network Proprietary Indicator Package. The Indicator Package is an updating package. Uh, currently, it has eight indicators, many of which you've seen on screen today. And these indicators, in combination with Market Profile, are how I get my edge in the futures market, and not only in the futures market, but in my equities markets and you know even things like cryptocurrency as well. Last but not least, you guys can get access to the Fundamentals of Futures Trading course on our website. Uh, FFT is a comprehensive course that provides two strategies for varying market conditions. So we provide a trending strategy and a ranging strategy. And in addition to that, you can also get access to the Fundamentals of Futures Trading course bundles, which include the FFT course, the Trading Network Proprietary Indicator Package, and Lifetime Discord Access. We also offer uh, payment plans to make it a little bit easier on the wallet as well. As always, thank you guys so much. If you have any questions about any of our products, about any of the indicators, anything like that, please feel free to reach out to me via email, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, any of our social channels, and I look forward to seeing you guys in our community soon. Much love, and I hope you have a great trading week.